Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Bruce Crafter is one of my favorite games. I have loved this game ever since its release. I kind of followed the designer for a while. I never put out another game quite as good as this, if you ask me. It's not a comment on the other games that he's produced, but how much I really like this game. Now, I'm not a beer drinker. I definitely don't drink craft beer, but I do like the kind of resource management and the way you can build your uh, enterprise, if you will, any way you want. Do you want to build, uh, there's a whole bunch of buildings that you can build and you will have a unique system than somebody else within the confines of the game. You know, do you want to be more of a farmer? Do you want to produce more? Do you want to be able to bottle more? And it's all kind of put into this game. The worker placement reminds me of viticulture. You don't have a lot of workers. You're kind of doing this, 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 and, you know, and you kind of got to think about what you want to have. Do you want to get another shift in order to do some of the other stuff at the end, like be able to sell more, etc. And you'll be building yourself up. But you got to manage all that with money. So this is another resource you have to gain and kind of plan for because you only got to pay employees and, and the money at certain times during the game. So you don't have to have the money all the time, but by this point you do or the negative penalties are going to be huge. I love Brewcraft. So I've upgraded this game. I got an insert for it. I got the meeple source for it. This is a game that we really enjoy. Even years later, I'll bring this game out and it's just a blast. Now, if you've never played a Euro before, there's a little bit going on here. I don't think it's I don't think it's overly complicated because people understand the process. You know, you gotta get the hops, you gotta get the barley, these are the recipes you're making. You gotta make the beer, then you gotta bottle the beer, and you gotta sell the beer. It makes sense versus something that's a little bit more obtuse or a little bit more abstract. The uh, flow of what you're doing is very easy. So a couple concepts in this game that were new and you haven't seen utilized a whole lot. You know, the more I think about it, the more I think it is pretty close to viticulture. But uh, which one I like more? I don't know. Viticulture just kind of ran away. This one you don't hear about as much anymore. But we really like this game. It's well produced. It's well designed. It's one of my favorite games I've ever played. And every time I go back to it, I just want to play it more and more and more. It gives you good decision space. It doesn't overstay its welcome. There's a lot of different variety in the cards and the employees and the different uh, brews that you can craft. Uh, so, you know, you have the starter ones you might play the first time and then you can mix it all up. So what you need for each recipe isn't the same. So you don't get into a pattern and based on what other people are taking, you might have to go a different route or a different strategy, or you might hire different employees that give you different bonuses. So you know, maybe you need to utilize those bonuses more than a strategy you've used in the past. There just seems like a lot of ways to kind of win at this game. And you really need to compete with the people you're playing against. And I like that without being take that ish. I mean, I'm kind of doing my own thing over here, but what spots on the board and like most worker placements, what spots you take, I can't take. I got to rethink my strategy here a little bit. What do I need? Oh, geez, I'm going to run out of money. Money becomes pretty tight. Everything is tight in this game. Fantastic. I love it. I highly, highly, highly recommend this game. One of my favorite board games of all time. Brew crafters. If you have not played this one and you like Euros at all, you like resource management at all, you like worker placement at all, you like viticulture, this is definitely one for you to check out. Brew crafters. So here's Brew crafters. You can see a pretty pretty enticing box here with the with the beer and you have like the dice hate me games. I like this quite a bit. Now once I have everything in here, I should say it doesn't close all the way. Maybe I'm not the best packaging person, and I have a custom insert in here. So you have a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. And then we're gonna have our players. Everybody's gonna get a uh, so two meeples, four little cubes, and some of these cardboard things that they can put out. These are fine, and they're sufficient. You get enough for five players. So and you have unusual colors, black, blue, purple, nude, and white. So not our normal colors that we're gonna see. You're going to have the first player marker, which is really cool. It's, it's like a craft beer. Uh, it's very neat. You can see the pub going up here. Although, eh. uh, Then you have little cardboard things you can use for some of the variants that are included. We kind of set those aside. And then you're going to have the cards that you utilize. Now, these are kind of hit and miss. So you're always going to have how many victory points they are and the ingredients. And I think that's easy to use. Uh, a couple things that were weird in this. So, like, this is called Sweet Crush, but when you go for the cube, it's called Vanilla. And these don't exactly match up, so that's kind of a bummer. Also, the cards they use maybe look like Kickstarter people. I don't really like the artwork on here. Eh. Uh, not, not my favorite. So these cards don't work very well for me. 
They're a little thin. They're fine. I've played this game quite a bit. I think everything works just well. Kind of wish the artwork was a little bit different. Now, here's going to be, this is a custom insert I have with mine. Yours will come with no insert. Uh, this is one I have from Game Trays, which I've done another video on it, which you can see right here. Uh, you're going to have these little uh, tokens. That will be the victory point things you put out. And then you're going to have all of these different advanced uh craft beers that you have and then on this side you have a picture of it the other side i'll show you how many victory points it's worth it's very handy and dandy so if you want to score it in the, the game it's this but for thematic purposes you'll probably keep it on this side and as you can tell there are a lot of different craft beers in this game you're also going to get five uh, pink, uh meeples if you want to do the interns variant then you're going to have your player boards now these player boards are going to be really cool uh, these are going to be what everybody's going to have one of these, which will show you where you put all the different buildings that you can purchase. You have a double sided, which this will be the uh, side everybody's a little bit different. This side would be the basic where everybody has the same stuff, and you, it's like a tech tree that you're going up. Uh, there's been enough here for five people. And then you're also going to have some player boards you'll have. So this will keep track of the different rounds in the game. There's only three years that you'll play through, but uh, four rounds in each turn, or however you want to word that. You can have your player board you have. You can see very easy to use. There's some spaces on here where you can put the variants and stuff, which is nice. And then your brewery action. So these are all really nice cardboard and should hold up really, really well. In this game tray, you're going to have all of your buildings that you can build. These are all the buildings that are available in the game. As you can see, they easily tell you the price of them. And what they do, you have to go to your reference sheet. You're not going to be able to tell from this. But once you kind of understand the game, these will be a lot easier. Then in here, you're going to have double. So everything that's in one of these is in the other. Uh, basically, you're going to have your money, which is nice cardboard chips. You have $5 and $1, your loans that you take. Victory points will be in these uh, cardboard chips that are very nice. And then I've upgraded this uh, with uh, Meeple Source, but you'll come with a bunch of different cubes. These are just big and chunky cubes, but I quickly upgraded mine using Meeple Source. So yours will not come with these fancy things, you just come with cubes of different colors. That's components. Components are really good. Keep in mind the insert I've upgraded, I've upgraded this. It's not a comment on anything being bad per se, uh, but there's a lot of moving bits and components in this, so be ready for it. So here's a rule book for brew crafters. It's a fairly interesting game. Now this is, uh, you know, it's a heavier game, I suppose. Maybe medium heavy. Lots of components, all with pictures here. Table of contents, overview, and objective. This is all really, really, really fantastic. You have setup. Here's a picture of setup. There's just a lot of bits in this and a lot of things. Just go step by step. You have letters that correspond so you can easily see where everything is and how it goes. They break up some uh, important terms and concepts. You know, just background information you have to know. Then you jump in gameplay. This is the game right here. These three sections right here. Then they break down each section into a little bit more detail and you get game end and kind of how things move then they're going to detail about the brewery actions this is going to be very important about this it goes and i would tell you you know take this slow normally i recommend people playing this two player the first time because in three to five you're going to add in this collaborate thing which just adds a little something a little extra it's not difficult but it is extra that you'll be utilizing so i think the game's a little bit easier to learn two player than you can jump in for a multiplayer the lab research will be explained over here and then what you have on this side is going to be all the different variants you the interns the traders and you can kind of mix and match it about how difficult you want it to be and just kind of how hard you want it to be you know do you want some interns to make the game a little bit more um forgiving traders market makes it a little more forgiving uh, you know, I felt like the employment agency and develop secret just kind of dragged the game out a little more and it's farming. So you can kind of customize a little bit that you want or just play with none of this, which is what I recommend the first time you play. There's a fact on the back that gives you a little bit of extra information. Although whenever they have a fact included in the instruction manual, it makes me wonder why it's just not part of the instruction manual, but maybe this is just how they wanted to organize it. Then on the back, you're going to have a reference sheet. This is fantastic to kind of take you through the game and so you can learn how to play it. So I'm going to teach you how to play this game the way that I teach this game, and I find it very easy. The winner of the game will be the person who scores the most victory points. We'll get back to how you score victory points through this uh, understanding of how to play, but just know the person who scores the most victory points. You're going to play three years of the game. As the game progresses, you're going to do everything in spring, summer, fall, winter, and you repeat that three times. The only difference between the seasons is a spring, you can use the farm which we'll get back to, and then fall, whatever you harvest will come off. So you put uh, a fruit or a hop or two of each uh, into your spring, into your farm if you happen to have one, and then by fall, uh, they will come off, and you'll have three hops instead of one and two fruit instead of one for each one planted. 
Uh, you can you, you don't have to have this at the beginning of spring or the beginning of fall. It's any time during that season. At winter, you're going to activate any powers that you have, which you'll see here on your tech board that says annual winter. So if you've gone to this spot or further, you will activate any of these powers here at the start of winter. And at the end, you pay everybody for all the money. Each of the buildings, etc., that you have, will have these markings on it. So you don't pay for anybody or anything until you get to the end of winter. And then for each dollar sign you have, you're gonna own you're gonna owe a dollar that you will pay in money. If you can't pay it, then it's very simple. You're gonna take a loan. And you're gonna take this loan, which will will pay off, uh, take two dollars. You can never pay this off though, and that first loan is minus two victory points, additional loans will be minus three. So you don't want to get these and you want to try to pay everybody off that you can. So what you're going to do at the beginning of each round is each one of these spots that have this little orange thing, you're going to fill it up. If something wasn't taken in a previous round, you will simply add more to it. So if these two weren't taken at the start of the next round or next season, you would add two more to it, having four there. And you will put all of these out on the board, and you're kind of reseeding the board and giving people's options of what they can do. And these spots here, once again, if they're not taken then it would just be more valuable in the future, be more attractive for people to take. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna place your workers in what's called the market phase. Everybody's gonna have two workers, and that's all you're gonna have in the game. Unless you play the variant with interns, you can have more, but we'll disregard that for now. It's very simple, like any other worker placement game, you place your worker down in player order, you take the action is there, and then the next person will go. When it's your turn again, you can go take another action of, of spot that you take. You can never go where somebody else is already taken because that spot is taken up. So let me tell you what each of the spaces do. This one gives you a choice. You can take a dollar or become first player, or you can join a partnership. And these partnerships are gonna be cards that are available. And basically there's two different types of partnerships, but basically what they're gonna let you do is convert items. This allows you to convert one basic ingredient into one coffee anytime or as often as you like. The other one allows you to convert spice. So these are gonna give you options of just more flexibility, but will take you an action to do so. In this one, you can hire a new shift or hire a skilled worker. And the skilled workers are going to be laid out at the beginning of the game. And what they're gonna do is basically just give you different powers as you go through. And you can just pick whoever you want from the whatever's available for your game. So I'll show you a couple. Take two malt immediately, take a free malt when you receive at least one malt from a market action space. Harvest one additional fruit for each planted fruit. Harvest one additional hop for each planted hop. Uh, your storehouse may now store up to 18 ingredients each. Immediately take two malt, one hop, and a yeast. Take an additional rep for each new batch aged in the barrel house. So basically these are going to give you powers that will kind of direct uh, where you want to go in the game. There's going to be two of these on the board for a three or four player game. Now you wouldn't use this in a two player game, uh, but just kind of utilize that you can either get a new shift, which I'll explain what that does in a minute, or you can hire one of those workers. This one's pretty easy. It gives you uh, three malt, two hops, or it gives you a yeast. This one only gives you one of the advanced ingredients, which are harder to get, the coffee, the spice, or the fruit, plus two malt or one hop. This lets you take two of any of the basics, so you can get hop, malt, or yeast. This one just gives you two dollars. Very easy. It gives you two hops, one hop. Now this is just like this one in a three player or four player game or five player game, but it has to be two different items. This can be any two, so I could get two yeast if I wanted to. But here I couldn't. It have to be different. This gives you two malts, and this one's exactly like this one. Get a new shift or hire a new skilled worker. So once players decide what options they're going to get, they will utilize their storage facility, which will be on their player board. Remember, everybody has a storehouse, and you can only store 12 goodies in there. So if I, for example, had uh, six hops and six malt, I couldn't fit any more in there. That's all we got to know about this board for now, and I'll show you more in the next phase. After everybody's placed their two workers in the market phase or any interns they may have, and the market phase is over, we're going to move to the brewery action. Now, this is for a three plus player. There also is a two player version. It does not come with the collaboration, but I'm gonna show you how to utilize that, but this would be ignored in a two player game. Collaboration is very easy. At the end of a turn, where you've been able to process beer, and I'll show you how to process beer in just a second, you can collaborate which means very easily that if you want to fill up one of these three uh, malt, two hops, one yeast, or one advanced good, you can place that item in there. So let's say you had two hops. You can place the two hops in there and you'll take a token signifying that you've done that. Now, once all of this is full, you will receive two victory points and a dollar and you'll be able to utilize that. 
Now, at the end of the game, if this is not completed, you will only get one victory point for doing so. And you can do as many as you want, except for all of them. You, ha you have to leave one for somebody else if somebody has to collaborate with you to do that. So that's how the collaboration is going to work. Not very difficult. Uh, but otherwise, these are the three main actions you're going to have. Install new building or equipment is very easy. You're simply going to take one of the available buildings and put it into your uh, into your uh, structure or warehouse, if you will. So, for example, if you wanted to take the double processing, you would pay nothing now, and you would cover it up and put it here. This would allow you to, to brew two beers at the same time. And once again, if you look here, at the beginning of the game, you owe one, two, three dollars. Plus, you're going to have one of your shift workers, so four or five dollars at the beginning of the game. Everybody's going to start with eight. So if I was to upgrade this, now I owe more money. Let's just concentrate on this. One, two, three. Now I owe one, two, three, four. If I was to build a farm, I would increase my cost each winter to five, just for this board, plus any shifts that I have and any workers or cards that I have. So as you get these, you're going to owe more money. So you definitely want them to be as beneficial as possible. But at the time that you put one of your shift workers there, and that's how you utilize these guys that you have. You always start with one shift. You put it here. And I can simply take it. I don't have to pay for anything at that time, only when we get to the winter phase. I'm going to go down here to the lab research next and kind of show you how that works. Now, at the beginning of the game, everybody would have chosen the basic trajectory or the advanced, which means everybody's board will act a little bit differently. They work exactly the same, except for the powers will be a little different. So I'm just going to signify on this side. So when the game starts out, you're going to have each of your cubes on one of the tracks. When you take the lab research action, you're simply going to choose one and move it to the right. And it says, take one advanced ingredient. Great, I would just take whatever advanced ingredient I want. But as you go up, annual winter, these will activate at the start of winter. These will be breakthroughs. So this one says, take one advanced ingredient when you receive at least three ingredients from any market action space. Great. And then the last one will always score you victory points based on uh, certain conditions. This one says, one rep for each of the six different advanced recipes you brew. So you want to try to uh, brew as many different advanced recipes. So very simply, Anytime you take this action with one of your shifts, you will simply move up once on one of these. The last action was process beer. Now this is gonna be the majority of the game that you're doing. So remember, when you process beer, if you're playing a three plus player, you can always collaborate afterwards. But now I'm gonna take this board away and show you how to process beer. When you process beer, you're gonna have a board like this and you're gonna have a brewery here. Now you might have a double brewery as the game continues on, or you might have a brew pub that would allow you to also brew beer. So the most you can ever brew in a turn would be three beers if you had the brew pub and the double processing system. And basically you're gonna have certain uh, recipes that will be available as the game progresses. It will tell you which ones are available. Now it'll always be porter, three porters, three ales, and three stouts. So let's sit concentrate on porter. In order for me to do an advanced porter, I would have to have done one of the basic porters. Once I've completed a basic porter, I can then do an advanced porter. But just because I've done a basic porter does not mean I can do an advanced ale or an advanced stout. I have to do one of those basics first. So if I wanted to uh, brew this beer, I would simply give up these resources. So four uh, malt, one hop, one yeast, and two coffee beans. And then I would grab this token from the available tokens that you would have, and I would put it in one of my brews. So let's take this aside. I'd put anything I had here. So let's say I had a pumpkin ale here. It would move over here, sell, and I would take two bucks. Then I'd put this in my brewery, and now I have brewed it. If I would take another brew action down the line, uh, anything I had here would move down. This would move and then I would brew my new beer here. So you're always kind of processing things down. The brew pub's gonna allow you, if you were to brew something here, you don't have to bottle it. So you kind of skip one of the things and you go straight to selling it. So it just makes you sell it a little quicker, but you always move it to the right first, get your money, move it down to the bottling and get whatever else you're brewing so you're ready to go. And these will be worth a certain amount of victory points as, as you're going through. If you're the first person to do an advanced brew, then you would get the little chip, and this is worth three points at the end of the game. Now, one little caveat here is if you remember the higher new shift, it'll allow you. Now, in order to hire your second shift, you got to have three batches brewed, uh, not sold, but just brewed. And to get your third shift, you need nine batches. And what this means is that I will be able to hire, let's say I was able to hire my second shift, 
So when we go to take the brewery actions, we will be able to do more things. So we're back to our brewery action board. Normally I just had my first shift, you know, I would take an action and I would be done. Having additional shifts, although look, it's gonna cost me $3 each winter, I can do maybe another action or the same action I've done. Now on the brewery action, people can go to the same spot. You're not blocking anybody out. After you get done with all of the years, you calculate who has the most victory points and that person will be the winner of the game. Who should buy this game? Anybody who likes viticulture, anybody who likes worker placement, anybody who likes, you know, maybe you're a brew crafter or a beer crafter and you like that kind of theme or IP attached to it. Um, I think that if you like tight resource management games, you like games with different ways to win, this is definitely going to be, it's a lot of variety in this game and one I can highly recommend to gamers who want a medium weight or higher Euro game. This is definitely it, but everything flows nicely. Everything makes sense of what you're doing with the theme. It was almost like the theme came first. You don't see it often with a Euro game. Absolute winner. I don't understand why this one isn't talked about more. Fantastic game. Brewcrafters, definite keeper, and I'll never get rid of it.